coming up on Colonial Sports Center. The women's soccer team will close out their regular season at home. And the men's hockey team is looking for their first conference win of the year at Colonial Arena against RIT. And the men's soccer team was in action and hasn't scored in their past three contests. But you can find all that more only here on Colonial Sports Center. And on tonight's episode of Colonial Sports Center, we've got all sorts of highlights and interviews. I'm David Chemansky. And as always, I'm Greg Sutton. In the show tonight, we're going to have Emma Granger sitting down with one of our analysts to discuss the volleyball season thus far, and she'll give you some insights into how the team's doing and, and how they've progressed throughout the, the long season that they've had. Absolutely, and later in the show, our very own John Handel will sit down with two women's basketball players to kind of preview their season and see what they're kind of expecting out of it this year. Right, but before we get to any of that, you know the Robert Morris football team has uh, begun a new era under Coach Bernard Clark. And this past weekend, they took on one of the conference rivals. Absolutely, they took on St. Francis uh, University out of Loretta, Pennsylvania. It was a uh, one of their in-conference matchups, as you just said, David. But they were looking; they're still looking for their first in-conference win. So why don't we go to Joe Walton Stadium to see if the Colonials could find their way onto the winners' board and in the conference? We'll jump right into the second quarter of play. This is where things kind of got interesting in the game. St. Francis, long toss, 40 yards to the end zone. Touchdown, Cyrus Holder. Great attempt by the RMU defense, but not quite enough effort to break up the play there. As we get to see next, a field goal by Eric Boffenkamp, who will put them up 10 to zero. Yet again, <laughs> Eric Boffenkamp, his toe, big part in this game for St. Francis, putting up another three points on the board here, jumping into the third quarter of action here. St. Francis on the attack again. Quarterback toss to the right side. Touchdown, Terrell Johnson, giving St. Francis just more pouting on the day, David. That's right. The, the Colonial offense uh, needs to get something going here. Absolutely. And this is what would happen here. Uh, Jimmy Walker, touchdown pass to Matthew Gonzalez which would put him in the lead for most reception touchdowns in career in program history. This past week, the Robert Morris volleyball team headed to New York for a road trip against two conference opponents. Their first matchup was against St. Francis Brooklyn, who they ousted back in Moon Township with a final score of three sets to one earlier this year. However, this time around, it was St. Francis at home, and they were the ones looking to avenge their early season loss to the Colonials. The volleyball team was not able to end up beating St. Francis to begin their road trip. However, the match was close. The teams split the first four games, setting up a final fifth game tiebreaker. St. Francis won this 15 to 12. Despite the loss, the Colonials effort was led by Emma Granger and Allison Londot, who led in aces and kills respectively. And now we have Spencer Witt joined by Emma Granger to talk about this game and some of the season. All right, and thank you so much, David and Emma. I'm here. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so like they mentioned before, you guys were on the unfortunate side against St. Francis Brooklyn. But on the other side, on Saturday, you took down LIU Brooklyn, the top team in the conference. I just want to go over that. You won three sets to one. The first set, you were down 25-13. But in that second, third, and fourth, you guys came back. Kind of go over real quick what changed between that first and second set. Um, going into the game, we were pretty excited because we knew that we could go in and mess up their perfect season, which is what we kind of wanted to do. Um, the first set wasn't very fun, losing really bad like that. Um, and so we came out and we just wanted to prove that we're a better team than how we played in the first set. And that carried on throughout the next three. And like you said, the first team to really spoil them <laughs> and them not going undefeated anymore. Um, talk about the closeness of those last couple of sets. You guys won 25-23, 28-26 in the third and fourth set. Talk about the intensity of that, playing the number one team at their home court, and you're able to take those in those really close sets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really intense. Um, it was going point for point in each set, so the intensity was super high, which was a lot of fun, honestly, to be able to play in that type of environment. Um, and it was good to come out on top of that. So one of the big stats to note that I was looking at through the stat sheet is that you had nine blocks. Did, be honest, did you even know that you had nine blocks coming out of that game? I had no idea. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you forget blocks because that's not as exciting. But, um, yeah, I just knew that as a, I wasn't producing as much offensively as I would have liked, so I knew that I had to do my other job, which is produce on the defensive side. I think the big thing, though, about you is that when you're not producing offensively, it kind of helps a little bit on the other side where a lot of players got a lot of kills, like Taylor Lord, mm -hmm. uh, Alyssa Hudak had a bunch as well. 
you know, if you're playing a team like LIU Brooklyn, they're going to be all over you getting double blocks a lot. How does that affect the entire team? Yeah, um, it took us, I think in the first set, it took us a little bit to find our rhythm and figure out what was going to work and what wasn't. Um, against LIU, it worked really well to go to the outsides, like Taylor and Alyssa, they both had great games. So it was really fun to just see them have such great games and really play hard against them. So I want to talk about another stat on the year for you. 43 aces so far this season. You lead the team in aces. Just kind of go over real quick for a lot of people who don't know what you do when your serves, your motions, the uh, rhythm that you go through every time you go up to serve. Mm -hmm. Um, each time I go to serve, I dribble the ball four times, and then I spin it in my palm. And that kind of gets me focused and ready to make my serve over the net. That's what's most important on my first serve. And then we have a, as a team, we have a progression. So the first serve's in, the second serve's a little harder, and the third serve, you go for an ace. Sometimes it happens on the first, but, you know, <laughs> you just never know. So, of course, when you serve it over in volleyball, you have to play in the back row. Mm -hmm. You're not used to the back row that often. <laughs> But I saw a couple times, past couple weeks, you got a nice couple of digs and your bench was ecstatic. <laughs> kind of go through the emotion of that, you know, playing in the back row, you're not used to it that often, but it's got to be nice to get those digs. Oh, it's so fun. I never get to play back row, especially in practice. As a middle, you don't go back row ever. So it's a lot of fun to get to play back row in games. and. Um, my teammates get so excited when I do get a dig because it's not very often. So if I get a pass or something, they're back there hyping me up, and that, that gets everyone excited. So it's a lot of fun playing back row. So, of course, this upcoming weekend you'll be back home against St. Francis, and then you have a couple more games. Just kind of go through what your, how your team is preparing for these last couple of games. Right now we're really focused on St. Francis. We want to get a win against them. They're a really good team, but I think that if we come together, we can pull through and we can beat them. Um, and then after that, we'll focus on FDU and Sacred Heart. But for right now, we're really focused on St. Francis. Now, St. Francis, a big match, the Dig Pink mm -hmm. match. Both St. Francis and Robert Morris still in shot for those playoffs, so mm -hmm. definitely a big game. What are the emotions going into this game? Yeah, um, I know I'm really excited personally, and as a team, we've been really focused in the, in the gym just to get prepared for um, the type of team that they are. We've been doing different drills so that we're prepared to play them. Um, it's really exciting, so they're kind of our conference rivals just because they're so close so hopefully we can come out on top of that so definitely exciting we'll look to see that excitement continue mm -hmm. tomorrow they you guys take on st francis in the dig pig match mm -hmm. here that'll be on nec front row we thank you so much emma for coming on to the show thank you so much for coming on tonight yeah thank you for having me all right and so we will send it back over to david and greg for men's hockey recap that's right this past weekend the colonials had a two-game series against the Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers on home ice at the Colonial Arena on Neville Island. With this matchup, the Robert Morris Colonials would be looking for their first in-conference victory of the young hockey season. And there it is, the Colonials against the Tigers. And the first period was really dictated by great goalie play. You got Francis Marat in net for the Colonials and Luke Drackett in net for RIT. Both goalies here, Greg, would, would face 15 shots and it would be a shutout headed into the second. But here, Right here, uh, Jeff Lawson, the freshman defenseman from Ontario, is going to put the Colonials up 1-0 on a great shot. And the Colonials needed that, right? Going for their first conference win. And then here, they needed this. They're on the power play. And you saw that, maybe even before Eric Israel saw it, wide open net on the power play to put the Colonials up 2 to nothing. And in this, in the third, Dan Maniento, he's a defenseman playing quite great offense right there and, and scoring. And the Colonials would go up 3-0. And now, now we're back to the great goalie play, right? That's Francis Marat. He faced 25 shots on the net, and he saved 25 shots on the night. A great performance. After grabbing their first in-conference win the night before, the Colonials hit the ice again to close out their weekend series against the RIT Tigers in front of the family weekend crowd. Now to Colonial Arena to see if the Colonials could sweep the Tigers or if the Tigers would be, able to, would be uncaged in Game 2. First thing we're going to see here is great passing first off by RIT, but a goal by Abigail Rockets. His brother Aiden actually plays for Rob Morris as a freshman this year, but could not play in this series due to, due to some complications health-wise. Next, we're going to see a save there by Logan Drackett. Next, we're going to see Colonials driving down. A little bit of mishandling the puck, but a shot in no matter by Michael Coyne. 
Jump into the third period of play. Things get interesting. RIT up one nothing still after that first goal by Abigail Duckus. And here we're going to get to see the Colonials get a, a rebound goal by Nick Lalonde. And that would be his first collegiate goal of his career uh, at Robert Morris. So that's pretty exciting. Great the emotion had to be going through him very well. Uh, saved by Francis Marat there. And then overtime was the deciding factor here. The Colonials had to go in, had to see what they could do. RIT moving the puck very but. A goal there by Gabe Valenzuela would give the game to RIT 2-1 to one in overtime. The women's hockey team returned home this past weekend to face off against the Lindenwood Lions. The Colonials have beaten the Lions in their past eight matchups. The last time Lindenwood beat Robert Morris was January 13th of 2017. However, would this level of dominance lead the Colonials to being overconfident? Some would call it a trap game. Let's head to the ice to see, well, let's head to the recap to see what would end up happening. And the Colonials ultimately came out strong, but it could not put Linden, but they could not put Lindenwood away. The game went into an overtime period and still no winner could be decided. With well, the Colonials led in most statistical categories like shots on net, face-offs, possessions, they were deadlocked with Lindenwood at two goals apiece at the end of the overtime period. Scoring for the Colonials was JC Gebhard and Lexi Templeman. And after the overtime tie, the Colonials and Lions hit the ice again the next day to see if the team would leave the weekend, which team would leave the weekend, with a win under their belt. The Colonials were looking to keep their winning streak alive against Lindenwood and snag their second conference win. Let's go back to Neville Island to see how the Colonials could fare. The Colonials would end up winning the game uh, by a, a tally of two to nothing, uh, JC Gebhard scored again, making that a three-game goal streak for her. And the Colonials would move out of the weekend with the win under their belt. And uh, after the tie, it was especially especially exciting. Right, and you know they kept their win streak alive, which was which was pivotal. So you know we've talked a lot about hockey, but the soccer seasons are coming to an end. So when we come back, we're going to get a look at the men's and the women's soccer team, and we're going to see how they do. And in addition to that, we've got Sam Anthony sitting down and taking a look at the football team's season with uh, Bernard Clark. And but not only that, David, we also have John Hanna sitting down later in the show to talk with two women's basketball players and see how what they're going to expect out of their season. And you're not going to want to miss any of it here on Colonial Sports Center. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man, to raise him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies, nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? What happened? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. We have a lot to get to, so let's get right into the soccer. It was the men's soccer team that was on a losing streak as they traveled to Emmitsburg, Maryland. The streak was a direct result of an offensive drought. The Colonials had not scored in their last three contests, and they lost each one, one to zero. Just one goal in any of those games would have changed everything. Could the Colonials finally get some offense going against Mount St. Mary's? We'll head to the game to see what they could do 
And you know, this first goal right here by Chris Corden was huge to put the Colonials up one nothing. They hadn't had a lead. Not, well, not only had they not had a goal, but they hadn't had a lead in a long time. So they're up one nothing. But Mount St. Mary's it has a free kick to, to notch things up right at the end of the first. And, and Greg, let me tell you what, this is a highlight, not only because, yeah, the ball hits the back of the net, but watch this. David, that looks like a celebration, as you said earlier, straight out of FIFA. It looks yeah. like he just pressed the button and he flipped. Unbelievable. I, I can't, that, that, he might be a part of the gymnastics. That team. might be the highlight of the night, but maybe not. Maybe the Colonials here can get something going, can get two goals to put them in the lead against a conference rival. And, and they're passing the, the, the ball around here, controlling it. And Ricardo Rota is going to be right in front, rebound. And what's interesting about this offensive production is Chris Gordon and Ricardo Rota is both of theirs first goal on the season. No better way to score their first than to win the game for them, David. Absolutely exciting for both those gentlemen. The Colonials' final game of the regular season was slated between them and the Blackbirds of LIE Brooklyn on Colonial Turf at the North Athletic Complex, otherwise known as the Knack. Let's head up to the hill to see if Robert Morris could win, could, would win back-to-back -back games to finish the regular season and defeat the Blackbirds of LIU. First, we're going to see here a penalty here. Really muddy out, David. Kind of an, an ugly situation for the field. Yeah, it's got to be tough to play in there. You're sliding all over. But the Colonials will get a chance here with Jane Schleicher on the penalty kick. But Jane Schleicher really lining up, thinking what she wants to do. And she would score on the penalty kick. And she was just actually voted NEC Player of the Year for women's soccer. So congratulations wow. to her. But next, we're going to jump into the second half of play here, where we're going to see LIU kind of moving the ball around. But a big save there by Julia Schmid to keep the Colonials ahead 1-0. But now we're going to see the Colonials move the ball around really well. Big kick, header out to the outside. Jane Schleicher finding it. And amongst all the defenders, oh finds the net goodness. again. Two goals for Schleicher on the night. Second most goals scored in a single season with 13 for Jane Schleicher in program history, may I mention. So very well deserving of that title of NEC Player of the Year. And the Colonials would end up winning the game 2-1 to one to close out their season. Earlier in the show, we got a look at the football team playing St. Francis. This year has certainly been a rebuilding season with a new coaching staff and a young roster. However, this has not stopped the team from setting offensive records. Throughout the season, this past week, Colonial Sports Center correspondent Sam Anthony had the opportunity to talk to Matthew Gonzalez and Coach Bernard Clark about the progress of the season. Despite falling 20-7 to this past weekend, RMU football put up their best defensive performance of the year. I don't know if it was great, but we did better. Yeah. Played a whole lot better on defense. We just didn't play the way we needed to play on offense. Too many miscues, too many missed assignments and things along that line. On the other side of the ball, the offense struggled with the absence of Elijah Jackson and Anthony Del Femini. Well, I think everyone's important to our offense more than anything else, to be honest with you. But if they're not there, it's got next man up. The next guy's got to get ready to go. He's got to be ready to get in there and do his job. And that's what it calls on. If your job, your number's called, it's time for you to get it done. Elijah, I'm still not sure. I'm totally sure uh, what's going to happen with Elijah. That's up to him, the trainer, and me. This weekend, the Colonials take on the top team in the Northeast Conference, the Sacred Heart Pioneers. I think what it boils down to more than anything else, they're a disciplined team. They do everything precise, so we got to make sure that we're a disciplined team. That's why we're practicing to do things excellent. We want to make sure our fundamentals are down, our technique is down. When you're facing a team like that to execute as well as they execute, you got to be ready to take them on. More than anything else, it's not about winning or losing. It's about being excellent in what we do. We're trying to prepare ourselves fundamentally and technique-wise to be prepared to go in and win the football games, but we've got to be technically sound in everything we do. This has been Sam Anthony reporting for RMU Century Media. And David, when we come back, John Hannah will sit down with two women's basketball players, like we've been saying the whole show, to talk about their season, what they're expecting out of it. And you're not going to want to miss it on Colonial Sports Center. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um... Will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. 
What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. Ah! Selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. I'm John Hanna, and with me is Mecca Zebo and Nia Adams. Thank you for joining me. Thank so, uh, you. your season is coming up soon, and uh, just how are you, how are you guys looking forward to it? I know we've been teasing it all day, but uh, how have you guys been looking forward to finally coming down and playing basketball this year? Um, I think uh, we're all really excited to start the season. Like we're all preparing for our first game next week, so um, we're all just working really hard and looking forward to opening up the season. Yeah, like Nika said, we're just taking it day by day and just getting better each day. Oh, and then uh, Nika, you were actually named the preseason All-NEC team. How does that feel and how do you think you're going to live up to the hype? Um, it feels good. Like, of course, when somebody receives a, an award, they feel good about it. It feels really good to be recognized, but you know, I wouldn't be here without my team. So without them, I wouldn't, they wouldn't be here to push me. And I'm not really worried about living up to the hype. As long as I come in to work every, every day with my team, then I'm, I'll be fine. And then uh, Nia, last year you only played three games, but uh, what have you done this off season to train and condition to hopefully play more games this year? Yeah, this off season, I just continue to just find my voice and just get stronger and do what I can in any type of way to just help the team. And then, uh, well, why and when did you guys start playing basketball? Um, I started playing officially in, like, the third grade, maybe. Um, I took a break around seventh and eighth grade, and then I've played since freshman year. So it's basically been a part of my life for yes. that long. Yeah, I played ever since I was 10 years old. I hung up my trillion skirt and grabbed the basketball. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, uh... Did you either of you have any siblings or a close family that really pushed you that you saw as sort of that competition? Yeah, I had an older sister that played, also played in college. So since she played, I decided to try try out basketball, and she's the person that really motivated me to play. Nice. Yeah, my father also played basketball, and my cousin played college basketball and overseas. So that was a great motivation. Nice. And then uh, Neka. You're 138 rebounds away from 500 on your collegiate career. How is it to, how do you think it'll feel to hit that milestone? Honestly, I didn't know it was that close. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like I said before, it's always great to be recognized for your hard, for your efforts. So, um, I'm, of course, I'm excited about it. And then, uh, Nia, this is your last year at RMU. How, I know you're probably sad, but uh, <laughs> how are you feeling to uh, be a leader on this team and what are you hoping to contribute this year? Um, I'm ready. I'm ready to go out and be on the court again and just help my team and help, especially the underclassmen, just know the ropes of the game and know RMU women's basketball and just how we operate. And then, well, speaking of RMU, what made you choose RMU uh, over, I'm guessing many colleges recruited you guys, what made you choose to come here? Um, for one, athletically, I would say like the bond of the team and just the success that I know that they have such good history of just winning and I definitely want to be a part of that. Um, I really liked the look of the campus. It's really clean and, and it's really like the campus looks nice and also I felt like I was at home here with the girls so I felt like I fit in and we were actually a team when I came on the visit. And then uh, you're a psych major so how does that education help with basketball and just learning how teammates work together? Um, well, <laughs> being a psych major, of course anybody who studies psych would be, their first answer is to, that you would like to study the mind and how people think. But 
studying psychology, it, it has opened my eyes to actually, you know, try to figure out how people think and how we work as a team and try to help solving problems also. And then, like you, you're a comm major, so how does that uh, help with you being a leader on this team and just getting your voice out? Yeah, and being a comm major basically helped me like develop my voice and just learn how to say things, when to say things, and just just being a comm major. I, I love my major and just just really ha using my voice. And then uh, just one last quick question: What's your guys' favorite uh, NBA and WNBA team? Well, I am now a Lakers fan because of LeBron, <laughs> LA Bron, yeah. And WNBA, I would say the Washington Mystics. Um, my friend plays there, and I will support her in any way. Nice. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't really watch much basketball, but I am a LeBron fan, so I would go with the Lakers. I'm not really, uh, I don't really watch WNBA, so I wouldn't say I have a favorite team. All right, well, thank you guys for the interview, or er, for coming down here and uh, having this interview with me. And uh, after the break, we'll go back to the desk with Greg and David as they come up and look at the upcoming games. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um... Will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! And Nick Lalonde on the power play. What a great collection of Colonial highlights was that. We had Emma Granger who was in the studio earlier with a few great plays, and Jane Schleicher, just named NEC Player of the Year. We saw another look at her goal. But let's get away from last highlights, and let's go to uh, last week's highlights, and let's go to the upcoming games. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, David. So what I'm looking at right here is men's soccer. You know, we just saw that they ended their losing streak, and, you know, they only have a few games left in the season. They're going to be playing uh, in-state rival St. Francis 1 p.m. on Friday. 
But as always, David, I'm always excited to see how the hockey teams are going to do. I love hockey season here at Rob Morris. It plays such a big part. They're down on the island, so it's kind of exciting to see how they're going to be. You actually have to travel to get the home stadium, so it's going to be exciting to see how the men's hockey team can do this uh, this weekend. And, and you know, November 6th, it might be voting day, but more importantly, maybe, is it's the start of the basketball season for men's and women's at USC and at Youngstown State. Pretty exciting for a both of those programs. Big matchup for men's basketball. They're clear on the West Coast. But we'd like to thank everybody that came in tonight, all of our guests. David, thanks for coming back with me. All of the people up in the control room, we'd like to thank you. We'd like to welcome you guys back to next week's episode of Colonial Sports Center.